The retirement of the F-111 is truly the end of an era after being a cornerstone capability in Australia's defence for close to 40 years. In this time, the strike capability of the F-111 and the photo reconnaissance work of the modified RF-111 have been impressive to say the least. And it has improved over time, with many airframe, engine, weapons and avionics upgrades since its introduction in 1973, making it still the fastest and longest ranging combat aircraft in the Asia-Pacific. This is thanks to the 400 aircrew and more than 20,000 technical crew who have supported the 36 F-111s in numbers 1 and 6 squadrons since it was introduced, accumulating more than 161,500 hours of flying time. The community won't forget the pig either. Its dump and burn capability has been a regular highlight at Brisbane's River Fire for many years, and the locals in South East Queensland, in particular the Ipswich community, have certainly embraced the F-111 as one of their own. While the time has arrived for the F-111 to move on, there will always be a place in Australia's heart for this remarkable aircraft. The TFR and the weapons and all the systems on this aircraft you know, are, are great, but they're equally matched by the great people that we've had maintaining, modifying this aircraft and supporting it in so many ways you know, throughout its life. And it's, uh, it's gone right through to, uh, to the last day. It, you know, as an aviator, I've been incredibly proud to have been part of the F-111 community and have flown the aircraft. And as a CO, I've just been even prouder to have seen the best that it brings out in people, their dedication and professionalism. And I know I'm going to miss it. I assume a lot of people are going to miss it, uh, but I think it's probably better to have loved and lost than never have loved at all. I'm just glad I was part of it. big thing with um, not flying the F-111 anymore will just be the, the performance of the aircraft at low level. You know, there's not a lot of aircraft that match that. Being able to sweep the wings back and go, uh, you know, Mach 1.3 at low level, uh, it's pretty crazy. So that's probably the, the biggest thing I reckon I'll miss. Flying low level, um, high speed, you know, we won't, won't get to do much of that in the future. So nowadays we uh, smash around basically everywhere, uh, down low level as, as quick as we can. Uh, you know, supersonic at, at 100 feet is pretty good fun and we certainly won't be be doing that ever again. Just the low flying, I think. I don't think I'll ever get to do that again, especially at 500 knots. I would just have so much fuel that we can, yeah, we can just fly forever. Probably the amount of fuel we carry. Uh, it gives you so much chance to have, uh, have a lot of fun, go a long way and go fast. Definitely the low level aspect of the jet. Um, that mixed with the high speed, so you, you can't go wrong when you're 250 feet shooting through valleys at 510 ground speed. Probably the terrain following and, uh, and the low flying that we get to do uh, you know, as our bread and butter in the, in the jet. Uh, in the future with the uh, newer types, um, obviously the F-111 carrying a lot of fuel uh, allows us to do that with the newer types. We're, we're probably not going to get that opportunity uh, as much. The, the low flying, the amount of low flying that we do, uh, talking to the, you know, the Raptor guys over at Red Flag and, uh, and the Super Hornet guys here, they, they only get very minimal. Uh, low flying, they have to work down to 500 feet even, and uh, for them to get below 500 feet or 1,000 feet, I uh, need specific off. So for us, it's an everyday thing. Yeah. Uh, so that's what I'm probably going to miss the most. I think the thing I'll miss the most will be just 
jumping into a flying suit, um, getting together as a team to plan out a really complex mission and, uh, and then going out and flying that mission and, and coming back and doing something that knowing you've done something that no one else in the world has the opportunity to do and it's, it's really great fun and you know whenever I'm on the ground and see an F-111 fly past um, it gives me a great thrill and hopefully you know whenever I fly past I give that same thrill to others and, and it's just great knowing that you've been able to do that as part of your daily job. The challenge of maintaining it. It's a modern aeroplane and you have to have uh, an outward look to keep it modern. Just being associated with um, you know, something that is a part of Australian aviation history. Probably the engines. Probably a fair bit bigger than the other jet engines at the moment, so a little bit more involved. Uh, just the troubleshooting really. It's a jet that's got some pretty unusual faults, that sort of thing, compared to the new planes. It's got a mind of its own really after being 40 odd years old. Probably trips. You know, it's uh, trips are when the squadron comes together. That's I think the thing I'm going to miss the most now that we've done the last flight in this aircraft is knowing that I'm never ever going to walk through that flight line door again, come out of this aircraft, start it up, operate it, never be down there, low level in the weeds, in an F-111. Might do it in other aircraft, but the thought of not being an F-111 is just incredibly sad. The other part is knowing that no one will ever look up in the air and see the beautiful lines of an F-111 flying again.